I like a nice bold sauce. It's gotta be sweet and it's gotta be pungent. None of this halfway, a little bit weak or whatever. It's gotta be a strong tasting sweet and sour sauce. Hi folks, today the topic is sweet and sour sauce. And I realized over the years, we published many sweet and sour dishes, sweet and sour fish, pork, shrimp, you name it. We've done uh, quite a few, and each one of these recipes have a slightly different sweet and sour sauce. So I decided today that I'm gonna standardize our sweet and sour sauce recipe that you can use for basically any dish. A couple of things that I wanted to say is that traditionally in Chinese restaurants, all the ones that I worked at, the sweet and sour base was using ketchup. The sauce, it com really comes out in it. A lot of people, chefs and restaurants use the ketchup because it was convenient. You know, it also doesn't taste bad, but it tastes ketchupy. So what I've decided is that I'm gonna use uh, tomato paste instead so we have more of a pure tomatoey taste uh, and also has a nice deeper color uh, and we can season it more the way we want it to. So that's one thing. Uh, the other thing that's not so common in all of our recipes, some of our recipes has it, is the use of aromatics, which I think makes a big difference. Good, different taste to it, adds a little something. A lot of these uh, recipes with sweet and sour have uh, pickled vegetables or some fruit. Sometimes it has uh, uh, pineapple in it. That's a great idea. If you want and like that fruity flavor, add a little bit of pineapple juice or add a little bit of pineapple syrup from the can that you're using. You like orange, or if you're making uh, a, an orangey uh, sweet and sour sauce, use orange juice. Just add a little bit of orange juice. Or if you like uh, a little cherry, you can add a little maraschino cherry juice or cherries. You can do anything you want. The only thing you, you should do is before you finalize your dish and add your cornstarch slurry, taste it. If it's a little bit too sweet, add a little vinegar. If it's a little bit too sour, you might want to add some sugar. If it's a little too strong overall on both ends, then add a little bit of water. So you decide exactly how you want it to taste, but I actually think this is a good overall solid recipe for sweet and sour sauce, whether you're making a sweet and sour sauce dish or whether you're making a dipping sauce for some fried wontons or some uh, fantail shrimp, for example. There's many uses for sweet and sour sauce and you can use this for, for any of them, really. So let's get to it. All right, so first thing, we're gonna add about a tablespoon of oil. What's important is the reason why we're using this pan is because we wanna use a non-reactive stainless steel pan so that you don't affect your wok. Because if you, with all this vinegar, if you use your seasoned wok, the patina will go. And you don't wanna do that. You, I'm sure you spent a lot of time seasoning your wok. So we put this on low, low to medium heat. Next is putting in the, uh, the tomato paste. and we're just gonna sort of fry this tomato paste up a little bit. I like doing this because it, it gives you a, a little bit more flavor. Break up these pieces. Next, we'll just pour in the sugar, the vinegar. We'll give this a stir. At this point, I'm gonna raise the heat a little bit. And you can smell those aromatics. And so I'm just gonna break up this tomato paste. And then I'm gonna, to this, I'm gonna add this uh, tablespoon of soy sauce, which helps darken the sauce, but it also gives you a little bit more umami, a little complexity to the sauce. And also adds a little bit of salt, which balances all that sugar that we're using. Now the thing about tomato paste versus ketchup is that tomato paste does have little particles in it. It's a little, a little bit chunky, so it's kind of good. I think it's good and it's rustic. It makes your sauce rustic, but if you don't like that, you just strain your sauce before you uh, thicken it in a fine mesh strainer. What happens is afterwards the sauce, like you'll see a, a really clear, clean sauce if you use ketchup because ketchup has been strained. Now I'm gonna add our water Okay, and then we're gonna bring this all to a simmer. All right, it's been simmering now for about a minute. But before I add that cornstarch slurry, I'm gonna take these aromatics out. 
All right, so I'm gonna drizzle this while we're stirring. Put half of it in here about, and then I'm gonna check. I think you need to use more. Yep, I think we're gonna put a little bit more in. Okay, that's it, right? Yep, this now I'm gonna let it, let it simmer for a little bit longer. It'll thicken. Remember, there's quite a bit of sugar in here which makes it naturally thick. And right, it just about coats a spoon. You can see by these particles, which I meant by the, uh, by the pulp of the, of the tomato. But I think that's nice. Right, so this is about the right thickness. Maybe a, could be a little bit thinner, if it, I mean thicker, if, it, if you wanted a, a, a dipping sauce. But actually, I think it's pretty good. And especially if you're using this for a dish, a sweet and sour dish, you can always add a tad more cornstarch slurry when you're finishing the, uh, the dish itself. And that's pretty much it. All right, so we've got our sweet and sour sauce here. And what I tell everybody is to taste it, which I'm gonna do right now. And that's perfect. Good amount of sweetness, good amount of vinegary, sourness, which I like. In fact, a lot of uh, some of the restaurants that I worked at called, uh, instead of sweet and sour pork, they call it sweet and pungent pork. One of my best friends in high school, he says, I like that sauce that your father makes because it clears my sinuses and I like that. It's really nice and sweet and sour. Now this is ready to make a dish. Actually, this, depending upon the size of your portions, you can, you can use half of it, or you can use the whole thing. You could set aside some for, uh, for dipping sauce. Or better yet, you just take part of this and you freeze it. And you freeze it into portions, and then next time you don't have to make the sauce. You just take it, defrost it, you heat it up, and then you re-add your cornstarch slurry uh, to thicken it up because it will thin over time, uh, especially if you freeze it or refrigerate it, uh, and then uh, uh, reheat it. So you might, you'll find that you'll need to add a little bit of thickener, not, not even close to what we added at the beginning. So let's say you wanted to make this sauce the night before uh, or even days or weeks before and freeze it. Your as is, as the sauce is, before adding the cornstarch slurry, you wanna put it in your refrigerator, let it cool of course, uh, or freeze it. And then when you use it, that's when you add the cornstarch and then that's when you can adjust the thickness According to what you want it because a lot of times the cornstarch will lose its power and everything will thin out and so you don't want to add that extra starch in there so there you have it your all-purpose sweet and sour sauce that you can freeze uh, it's uh, it's a new and modified sweet and sour sauce recipe that I think is universal virtually anything a lot of people uh, since fried food like fried wontons or egg rolls even uh, which I like I have to confess I like that a little bit more than the duck sauce fantail shrimp for example or just your all-out sweet and sour pork sweet and sour chicken all that right here you saw it on the walks of life .com. <laughs> okay, <there you> <laughs> Thank you.